James Hewson spent six years as director of the Melbourne International Film Festival. 2006 was his last year at MIF as he was appointed CEO of the Australian Film Institute. Now, we were interested in finding out what we could about the AFI, but we also had some questions about MIF. Last year's MIF in particular. In fact, Bazoo reviewers may remember this clip from our 2006 wrap-up episode. Number one is the worst film I've ever seen in my life, and I saw it at Melbourne Film Festival. It's so bad I don't even qualify it as a film, it only just sneaks in. It is called Phantasma. So why did Mr. Hewison program this film? A few days ago, we found out. All right, James, you've gone from festival director at MIF to CEO of the Australian Film Institute. The film lover in me thinks this is a very noble move of you. The film lover in me also thinks this is an incredibly stupid move of you. What prompted the move initially? Uh, can I address the latter part of the question yeah. first? Absolutely, yeah. So, calling me stupid. Yeah. I can I address that first? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that uh, amongst the many things that I came to understand very, very well when I took up the position of festival director at MIF was that uh, it was an extraordinary experience. And one of the things that it brought me a hell of a lot closer to was the travails of filmmakers working in this country. Seeing a bunch of films everywhere else and travelling to film festivals and whatnot was an extraordinary luxury, or a series of luxuries, but it made me realise that uh, the more I got to know filmmakers working here, and the conditions in which they were working and the disregard that was afforded to them uh, at the risk of sounding like uh, some kind of superhero arriving from elsewhere. When the position at the AFI came up, the thing that appealed to me was that uh, knowing all of the conditions in which Australian filmmakers, not all of the conditions, but a lot of the conditions in which filmmakers work here and the disdain with which they're regarded, uh, not least of which by audiences, and there was a, a great desire that is still absolutely present uh, for my part about how do we reinvigorate or invigorate audiences in Australia about Australian cinema. Can we influence in any way at the AFI the way that people regard films that are made here? So that's, that's the MO for me. That's, that's the principal motivation. Well, jumping back to uh, last year's Melbourne Film Festival, uh, i got to say it's like Christmas to me. I just, I, I, I quit my jobs. I, I leave my girlfriend if I have one at the time. I don't see my friends and family. I give up on sleep. Is this, is this one of those weird internet questions? <laughs> uh, I can turn them into one if you want. But so uh, where can I find the website that's going <laughs> to satisfy my design? No, 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 no. It's just films. Like as long as you're playing a film at MIF, I will be there. It's my favourite time of the year. Love all the stuff you play. Except I have to ask you about a film called Phantasma. Yep. <laughs> Lissandro Alonso. Lissandro Alonso, exactly. He's I, ready for uh, it. Look at yeah, him. <laughs> he knows, he knows. Now, I can see even the films I don't like, I can see why somebody would like. Yeah. That film, I saw absolutely no merit to it at all. I, I want to know what, what you saw in it. You'd seen his previous film? I haven't. No. no. Uh, it was, it was you I lost. guess... Why. Yeah. So, what the hell are you asking <laughs> me that question for, man? Uh, Phantasma, Phantasma is, uh, is, is purely an indulgence. And Lissandro, if he was sitting right here, he'd tell you, albeit probably in Spanish, which would be inappropriate, because you're on Channel yeah. 31. And that film is so profoundly boring, I'm sure for someone like you, because you hadn't seen his previous feature, which was amazing, yeah. uh, and incredibly boring, but... Because uh, they show a clip from it in the new film. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, they see him watching his film. Yeah. So and, he, and somebody walks out of that The height of indulgence. And there's only two people in there. Yeah. And one of them walks out and it's not even the director. Exactly. Although the director's kind of getting a bit nervous going, am I going to walk out of my own film here? At that point you go, oh, okay, well this guy knows that his films are so boring that people are going to walk out, so why am I indulging him? I'll tell you one very brief anecdote, which is that we had a, a program at MIF. Uh, and I'm sure, well, at least I hope, we'll continue called Accelerator, which was for young writer-directors. And we managed to convince John Clark to do a session. And he arrived about two minutes before the session was about to start going, oh, James, what, what am I supposed to be doing here? And I said, oh, hey man, you're supposed to be talking for like two hours. And he said, is there such a thing in cinema or even in English, as a frisson of boredom. And I thought... It's a very Clark thing to say. 
<laughs> well, he's, he's trying to probably mess with me. But on the other hand, I thought, well, yeah, because probably a lot of the films that I love, like this film, are about a frisson, like a, a moment when you go, man, this is so boring, but yeah. it's curiously working its magic on me, although obviously not with you. Yeah. Have you been convinced of any of this? <laughs> me? Yeah. No. A little, oh, I'm convinced of the merit that you see in it, but I'm, I'm thinking back to the film and it's not, yeah, it's not changing my opinion of it very much, although no, I'm curious to his, see it. His, his, the, the previous feature film was about a guy who leaves prison. I think my six years at the Melbourne Film Festival were kind of about that. I mean, what's, what's the stuff that you're kind of going through as, as an individual in this incredibly luxurious position as a, as a director of a festival? You go, I didn't know anything about this stuff and now you're pushing it into the centre. And that was the incredibly fascinating thing. And some of it, people didn't like. And a lot of it, people didn't like. But, and that's not the motivation to kind of flip the bird at people, but it's, but it's, you know, if it becomes ordinary, then it becomes really uninteresting. If it becomes mundane, if people go, well, that was kind of good, or it was even kind of great, well, everybody gets bored, you know? And maybe that's what happens with other festivals. But if people go, Oh geez, you really kind of flipped my world there. Or if you went like, what the hell is this film doing in the program? And as much as I didn't give you a good answer to that, <laughs> uh, well, you probably think so. That's that's kind of the fundamental of it. Unless it kind of changes, or at least challenges the way that you look at stuff. Well, why do it? You know.